Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best songs from the musical version of The Color Purple. Number 10, Lily of the Field. You can't do this! You can't do this! There is no shortage of awful things Celie Harris endures, but at least she has Nettie. Despite being her sister, she's also her only real friend. This is why it's so devastating when Celie's abusive husband, Mr., banishes Nettie from their home. In the aftermath, Celie's sense of self and even her faith are left shaken. Won't you bring back my Nettie? Lily of the Field finds her pleading to God to bring Nettie back. The latter promises to write, but when Celie doesn't hear from her, or isn't allowed to hear from her, she loses hope. What kind of God? It's a haunting song, and a difficult one to shake off once you've heard it. You... Number 9, Opening, Mysterious Ways. Hey sister, what you gonna do? Gonna die by the river, gonna play with you. The first rousing number introduces us to Celie and her sister Nettie, as well as the group of church ladies who will reappear throughout the show as a sort of Greek chorus. Despite their uproarious praise, Celie's sad story breaks through their joyful noise. When the king threw Daniel in the lion's den. They remind her and us that God works in mysterious ways, and those ways don't always make sense. Setting up the religious themes that will follow her throughout the story, this uplifting score serves as a reminder to keep faith during even the most troubling of times. Number 8, African Homeland. Dear Celie, oh, I love you. Years down the line, Celie's discovery of letters sent from Africa detail Nettie's experiences as a missionary. African Homeland is presented in tableaus and fragments of memories. I teach your children ABCs. Instead of the American gospel and jazz inspired numbers we've been treated to, this number is infused with African drum beats. There's a lot to fit into this song given that it represents years of lost letters, and we get to hear about Nettie's journey to the continent and all its beauty. I vibrated like a bell when I saw the African coast. We also hear about her own suffering, and her final letter concludes on a note of faithfulness that she will see her sister again. I only hope that when that day comes, we are not too old we to recognize each way. other. Number 7, Too Beautiful for Words. I've always been the kind of gal that had a lot to say. Celie's life is completely upended by the arrival of her husband's old flame, singer and all-around good time Shug Avery. Needless to say, Shug has lived a lot of life. She says what she means, means what she says, and doesn't care what other people think. I says the things that's on my mind. Too dumb to shy away. However, she's struck by Celie's grace and resilience. Even though Celie's walked through life believing every terrible thing that's been said of her, Shug can see her in a way no one ever has. It's an eye-opening moment for both of them. You hide your head under your wing. The tenderness between them is a highlight of the show, coaxing Celie out of the doom and gloom. Too beautiful. Number six, push a button. Now there's something about good loving that all you ladies should know. Shug's first song at the local juke joint is as playfully erotic and lyrically suggestive as any classic jazz song. Till then, she'd been recovering from illness, so this is really the first time we get to see her at her full seductive power. Keep on turning up the voltage till that man begins. She slinks and howls through the sexy track with freewheeling abandon in total control of the scene. Now listen, all you red hot lovers, you ought to know what to do. Although it's a showcase for the performer playing Shug, it's also a rowdy ensemble number that goes a long way in throwing us into the world of a boozy backwoods 1920s saloon. Push that Number five, hell no. All my life, I had to fight. Miss Seeley's stepdaughter-in-law, Sophia, barrels into the story and becomes an early influence on Seeley's journey of self-discovery. 
Her song, Hell No, is a testament to all she's had to endure at the hands of men. I had to fight my brothers, my cousins, my uncles too. She leads the women of the ensemble in her determination to never again be any man's victim. Broadway cast member Danielle Brooks described how empowering it was to sing the song every night. Oh, you better learn how to fight back while you still alive. Defiant and wickedly funny, it's the perfect encapsulation of Sophia's place in the world of the musical. She's brassy and unwilling to back down. She has to be that way to survive. Hell, hell. Number 4. Mr. Song, Seely's Curse. Nobody to put up with me. Nobody to mess with me. Nobody to push me around. Although the 1985 movie doesn't totally redeem Seely's abusive husband, the novel and the musical follow his transformation after Seely leaves him. Nobody to tell me who I am and who I am. His fortunes sink and his life goes downhill, all because of Seely's supposed curse on him. It's more than a simple case of what goes around comes around. A black man's life can't get any worse. Left alone with himself, his fears, and his misfortunes, he sings a roller coaster of a song where he bears his soul and resolves to change his ways for the better. It may be hard to swallow after what we've seen, but if this show does one thing, it's explore nuance. Ain't gonna be nothing I say, gonna be something I do. Number 3. What About Love? It's than me. Seely may be naive and Shug may know almost everything about everything, but both of them are on the same page at the end of Act 1. What About Love is their duet after discovering their burgeoning attraction to each other. Love's the one. Each woman has to realign what she knows about love. The realization they come to is that love is not defined by tangible things, but by how they feel and what they can be for each other. And what about, what about love? This relationship, while it lasts, provides a lot of healing for Seely, making What About Love and its reprise one of the most moving numbers in the show. Love. Number 2. The Color Purple God is inside you and everyone else. In a riveting counterpoint to Lily of the Field, Suge first sings the title song to Seely in the second act of the show. God is the flowers and everything else. Realizing how much of Seely's anger and despair is still unresolved, Suge tries to comfort her with the conviction that God is not vengeful, but a force that lives in every living being. By the end of the story, the two reprise the song in a powerful show-stopping climax. Their anthem of gratitude, strength, and beauty closes the show, leaving the audience on a note of tremendous hope and love. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. I'm Here I don't need you to love There was no way it wouldn't be number 1. It's hard to compete with a crowd pleaser like this. Taking its refrain from Seely's iconic and heart-stopping speech from the original story, I'm Here is her triumphant moment of self-realization. I got my sister, I can feel her now. Despite what the world has done to her, and despite her mistreatment by Mr., she knows how much she matters. Her reward is her self-worth. Just as a piece of music, it's impossible to hear the song and not feel something. With its soaring vocals and stirring message, it never fails to bring the house down. Hey. What's your favorite song from The Color Purple? Tell us in the comments. It's Sunday morning. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.